Good morning, folks. We've heard all sorts of things over the last day and a half, two days, about engineering and engineering best practices. But I want to go ahead and say, don't forget Conway's Law. So how many of you actually have heard of Conway's Law? Decent number of hands, good. Well, let's review. <clears throat> so Conway's Law actually says that no matter what your organization or the product you're trying to build, they will reflect one another functionally. So we have a very big question. If we want to make changes to the product we're building, we've been talking a lot about microservices. I hear rumors that someone over there has talked about that. Yeah? OK. So if we want to talk about microservices, if we want to talk about changing binary objects from being monolithic structures, or even infrastructures from being monolithic and vendor dependent, then we need to talk about the systems and the people around it. Turns out very few technological problems turn out to be the technology anymore. A lot of them turn out to be the people and the systems in our organizations. So I guess the first question to answer here is, if we want to change it, what do we change first? Anyone have any suggestions? Do we change the people? Do we change the chicken? Do we change the egg? OK, so I'm going to actually suggest that we need a chicken omelet. <laughs> I worked a long time ago. This is a keynote, so there's a requisite anecdote. Um, I worked a long time ago for a bookstore based in Seattle. You may have used it. They ship all the things now. Um, this was back when WebScale didn't have a name. And we were spending all our time trying to figure out how to give our customers what they needed as fast as they possibly could. And what was built looked a lot like this. There was a point in time where the binary that built the Amazon front page was between 300 and 500 megs, the binary. And it took between 8 and 12 hours to compile sometimes. And then, oops, it failed. So that is not what we would call a fast iterating process. And as we were trying to web scale and control failures and risk and all of this, we put in lots and lots of rules, lots and lots of change management, lots and lots of care. And I remember one particular day when I needed to reboot a development server but we weren't really quite sure of all the dependencies for it. So I had to go to a change management meeting. OK, this makes sense, for some value of sense. And I it ended up requiring VP level approval in order to reboot a development server. As you can imagine, this is not, again, going to be the fastest way to iterate and ch make changes uh, to your code, deliver good service to your customers, et cetera. So, at some point, shortly after I left, at some point after I left, Jeff came down and said, we need to fix this. This is taking too long. We're not actually mitigating risk. It's too difficult to move. We're not making enough changes. And so he issued what has become known as the two pizza team edict. So, well, there's great debate about how many people two pizzas feeds pizzas feed <laughs> and how hungry the engineer has to be. And, you know, there can be a whole Great big long set of jokes on that. Um, although that's true, we don't know how big a two pizza team really is. The idea was to have small and agile teams. And that's fantastic. And those small and agile teams then start working with each other through strong agreements. And those strong agreements look like software interfaces in a lot of cases, look like requirements documents, look like APIs. And at this point, you have small teams being able to make changes to their pieces of code as long as they don't violate these contracts that are the strong boundaries between the different elements. So the monolithic code base that once served Amazon.com, several hundred megabytes, now looks more like a few hundred micro microservices to render the front page. And if one of those microservices fails, and fails to meet that SLA, you as the end user might not even know because it just won't render that little square. And so this makes a better customer experience, makes a better developer experience, makes the teams able to move more rapidly. So there's a great 
paper uh, rant, really, on the web by Steve Yege uh, called The Platform Rant about Amazon and Google, and it talks about this change more in depth. And certainly, executive sponsorship helps in all of this, but it's not the only way to do this, and not everyone has the luxury of being able to address the entire monolith in the next 18 months, or six months, or however long. So, functionally, you out there who are saying, how can I move from where I am to where I want to be? How are we going to refactor this elephant? There are a couple of strategies and a couple of possibilities that seem to happen over and over. And one of those is to build out a little tiger team and start moving a single piece, a single service out of the monolith. And this causes some cultural challenges. They, it can give you a sense of haves and have-nots in an organization. And you end up with people thinking that they weren't chosen because they weren't part of this, or, or because they weren't uh, the best coders, or because they weren't the best communicators. Uh, in this case, I would say being a better communicator is often an important part of this. But these small teams can be considered divisive, can be considered isolating, if you don't spend a whole lot of time focusing on the fact this is not a promotion, this is not necessarily important. This is more about pioneering. Going out and making changes to the way your organization builds, conceives of, and delivers software is all about pioneering. It's still chopping wood. It's still carrying water. It's not all glamour. That said, another important component of this team that breaks out to try to bring this change is, in fact, making sure you have a culture of sharing, a culture of learning, failing publicly, and then being able to take that information, take those learning experiences back to the rest of the team and allow them to learn from you and your experiences. Again, pioneering. Not necessarily that the new team is better, not necessarily that the old team is worse, but that there is a sense of shared journey and a sense of growth for the entire organization. This growth continues on to actually allow your organization to move to whatever sort of architecture you think is the right one for your team for your company. It doesn't have to be microservices. It might be some combinations of microservices and monoliths. But we do definitely see the future as being all sorts of full of HTTP. APIs, websites, web services, API gateways, all sorts of fun ahead. And making sure that you understand HTTP as a protocol is, and learning as I said, from the successes and failures of those teams going out to break out these little services is incredibly important. And I get to say thank you all for being here. Please stop by the NGINX booth, because we think HTTP is really cool, and we can help. Have a great afternoon, and enjoy the rest of your sessions.